Technical tip from my boyfriend. I introduced Wonder Studio in a previous video. This AI tool automatically animates, lights, and composes CG characters into your live action footage. And it allows you to save out the motion capture information as a Blender file. Okay, great stuff. No expensive mocap suits. Right now the software is free in its closed beta version at wonderdynamics.com. You can get access by email through their request access link. If you get permission, you'll be able to use their online app and portal. You can upload live footage segments that are less than 2 minutes and 200 megs. You can pick from a selection of existing meshes to replace your live footage or upload your own mesh. Start by creating a new project. Upload your footage. You can drag and drop. Before using the AI, you have the opportunity to clip your footage to the section you want to focus on. Click Next. Now the system will scan for all humanoid characters in the scene. If you have more than one person in the scene, you can pick which person to replace by clicking the area that is highlighted by a bounding box. Now choose from a list of CG characters to replace your human actor. Click and drag. Then click Next. The system will spend some time rotoscoping your footage and generating the motion capture information. When it's done, your AI information is housed in a project bin. Select the project. You can preview the new footage with the AI motion captured CG character. You can export the following items. AI motion capture. A clean plate with your human character removed and the background plate replaced with AI generated backfill, alpha masks, and a blender file. Let's download the blender file. It will have the CG mesh, the skeleton, and the animation data in a single file. Let's take a break right here. Normally, Wonder Studio will produce solid files that can import into meshes directly. Meshes rigged, orientation correct. Those situations are easy to port into Unreal, but let's go through a more difficult situation. That way, if you see an advanced process, you will be equipped with being able to handle most pipelines from Wonder Studio to Blender to Unreal. Okay, in this scenario, the skeleton arrives with the animation attached. The mesh appears too. But the mesh isn't skinned to the skeleton or armature. <clears throat> Blender. Let's create a clean animation skeleton for Unreal and a proxy mesh for easy retargeting. Here, you can see the skeleton exists with the animation and a good orientation. The animation plays through properly, but the mesh is not skinned. Delete the Wonder Studio camera and mesh. For the next step, you should have the Skinify add-on enabled. Select the Skeleton Armature, go into Pose Mode, press N to open the side panels. If you don't see the Create tab, then you'll need to enable Skinify. Go to Edit, then Preferences, search for Skinify. Enable it and save your settings. Now, still in Edit Mode, press A to select All Bones. In the Search tab, Click the top button. Now, mesh cylinders are created for each bone. You can shape the mesh using the Sculpt tool, but for now, let's just skin the mesh. Go to Object Mode, Shift select the mesh, then select Skeleton Armature, and Control p We can use automatic weights. Now, in the Object Properties, make sure that your Skeleton Armature is selected and move from the rest position to the pose position. Great! Now the animation has a preview mesh. Let's clean up the units from Blender for Unreal. Even though the units have been aligned for FBX import, we will end up with very, very large sizes for the bone handles in Unreal Engine if we don't do the following steps. It's not the end of the world, but it's nice to have bone sizes fit the screen in Unreal when exporting FBXs from Blender. Go to Scene Properties, then Units, change the unit scale to 0.01, now select the Skeleton Armature, change the scale to 100. 
Then apply all transforms to change the units back to a baseline of 1. Let's export the mesh and skeleton armature by selecting both with shift mouse clicking. Then file and export as FBX. Limit to selected objects. X as forward, Z as up. Geometry tangent spaces. Armature turn off leaf bones. Include baked animation. That's your motion capture information. Now export. Inside of Unreal, import use plus add or click right and import. Keep default settings. Make sure import animations is turned on. There's only one animation, so select import. If we had multiple animations, we would select import all. Smoothing groups is a typical warning message. Simply clear and ignore. If you're new to Unreal, multiple files will be created. There is a skeleton file, an animation file, a physical asset mesh file. But we will be looking at the parented file called skeletal mesh. This file is the mesh that's skinned to the skeleton with bones that are attached to the animation file. It is typically labeled in pink. Double click it. Even though we open the mesh skin to skeleton and animation file, you are able to navigate to the single skeleton file and the single animation file in the top right corner. But again, let's focus on the pink skeletal mesh file. If you don't see your skeleton bones, click the character button, bones, and show all hierarchy. The bones should be sized nicely. Again, if we didn't scale things in Blender, the bone handles would be enormous. This is what it looks like unsized in Blender. If you're in that situation, you can resize the preview of the bones by clicking Character, Bones. Bones draw size 0.01. My bones were scaled properly, so 1.0 will work. Now, the final procedure. We want to take the motion capture animation and retarget it to the CG character I have in the Unreal Engine scene. For that, we need to understand Unreal's retargeter. The retargeter works by speaking between two rigs. You will need one rig for the source skeleton and a second rig for the target skeleton. The Wonder Studio skeleton is the source skeleton. Now, Unreal calls these rigs IK rigs. Forget about IKs. We won't be needing to create IK targets for this standard mapping, but you just need to know that Unreal calls these rigs IK rigs, even though we are building direct FK, forward kinematics. Right click in the open area or click plus add, then animation, then IK rig, then rig. Name and double click the new file. Unreal won't be mapping bone to bones directly. Instead, Unreal would take a chain of bones, look at the source and the target, then just figure it out. For example, you will create an arm chain in the source and an arm chain in the target. And even if the arms have different numbers of bones, Unreal will extract what the overall effect of the arm should be. To do that, we will assign one chain for each limb. Select the starting bone and the ending bone of a chain. Then, right click. Pick new retarget chain. Unreal nicely guesses a name for you. Then click OK. It will ask if you want an IK goal. Just click no. Later, if we want to attach things like feet to the floor or an object to a hand, we can add an IK goal. Continue with other limbs. You can use the hands at the end bone instead of the fingers. Same with feet instead of toes. The final step is to ground both rigs with a starting point, a root. For Wonder Studio, select the hip bone and right click select set retarget root. Save your file and your IK rig for the Wonder Studio source skeleton is done. Now, do the same for the target skeleton CG character. Again, you can use different bones, but the chain name should be the same as the source target. Again, find a hip bone to act as the root bone. If the chain names are mistyped or not the same, you can simply use drop-down menus to match the two rigs. 
Now that you have two IK rigs, we need to create a retargeter that will match the two skeleton animations together. Click plus add animation IK rig retargeter. It will ask you for the source skeleton. Select the Wonder Studio IK rig you just created. Name it and double click open. Unreal may use 8 as the default bone handle size. Feel free to resize the bone handles back to 1. In the details panel on the right, pick the target IK rig. Let's check some settings. First, the target chain should have a corresponding source chain. If the names were labeled the same, then Unreal will match the chains automatically. If not, select a source chain from the drop-down menu. Second, the orientation of the rest pose for the Wonder Studio skeleton might have been facing up in Blender. Despite changing the orientation during the FBX export, your starting point should be to rotate the target skeleton 90 degrees. Click the Root Settings button. Locate the Offsets parameter. Then, the Rotation Offset field. Use the third valve, the Z value, and change it to 90. Now, we need to load the animation for the retargeter to map. Click the Asset Browser tab, double-click the animation, the source and target meshes will animate. If you want to reposition the meshes so they're easier to use, you can change their position without affecting the final animation. This is just for previewing. Deselect in the Open Preview. Click the Details panel, find the preview settings, and adjust the target and or source to your liking. When you're happy with the results, it's time to save the retargeted animation into your target skeleton. These new animations for your target skeleton can be pulled into the animation sequencer for cinematics and customization. Click the Asset Browser, select the animation that you loaded into the preview, then click Export Selected Animations button. Pick your export folder, and you're done. This approach can be used for other motion captures, Rokoku, Adobe's Mixamo, and of course, Blender. Ooh, AI is changing the world of motion capture animation.